in this video, this is the second part to this little series that uh, inspired by my friend asking questions about how to turn your side passion into a full-fledged business <clears throat> just based upon my experience. First and foremost, I think the fact that you watch the video right away when I didn't even tell you, I didn't even send a link to you or anything, is that you're you're openly waiting for um, information, you're, you're actively seeking out things that are gonna expand your knowledge base and you're, you're just very active about what it is that you wanna learn and um, get the answers to for yourself. And so I think that's really important to kind of make note of. Um, in this past first quarter, um, I've now had the experience of hiring, firing, um, team building, recruiting, what it means to be a leader and all that stuff. And, and it was really um, challenging for me, it was really hard. And one of the, the main things that I took away from that experience, trying to be a better leader and trying to recruit the right people into my team is uh, one of the aspects that you showed, which was being very active like that. So I think that's an A player sort of attitude where you're just like, yes, give it to me, yes, give it to me, yes, give it to me. And it's like this where, you, you know, you're feeding the chain, you're getting the rope, somebody's feeding it to you, you're getting it from any location, but you're just like, yes, next step, yes, next step, yes, next step. And along the way, you're gonna find that, hey, you don't need that bit of information, cool. This one I really need, I'm gonna hang on to this one. Um, and that sort of attitude, I think is, it's hard to find and certain people, they're, that shows that you are thirsty for the knowledge, so that's great. Um, that's something that we can kind of weed out from the first video. It's, it's really important, I think, to pat yourself on the back with, is that, hey, you have a good attitude, and um, don't ever think that it's too much, <laughs> that you're not, um, that you're, you're being too loud or something. I think that's, that's really important. Okay, so anyway, let's move on to the second stipulation that I talked about in the, oh, well, I talked about, the first thing that I talked about in the first video was, okay, get get your thoughts more organized, and um, that's gonna be a revolving process. It's not just a one-time thing. Whiteboard it, write it down, verbalize it, email somebody, spitball with somebody. All those things are really great to kind of um, whiteboard your ideas, get your ideas, and give them a little bit more life, give them, you know, a chance to kind of be thrown up on the wall and seeing what sticks, like I said. So that's great, that's a great process, it's a great um, fundamental step, so don't skimp on it. You know, keep going back to that, keep going back to the whiteboard, it's it's all good. The next thing that I wanna talk about in this video is um, you love your nine to five, your friend doesn't, so that was just another stipulation. I kind of already, another thing that I wanna say about that is that, you know, even though you have your friend involved, um, like I said, you still have to be really clear about what you want and what you need from this passion project turning into a business and again communicating that i can't underline that enough because um so many times when we get involved with friends we're afraid to step on their toes or say something too much or you you want to give them um the right of way because you want to be polite and nice and you don't want things to ruin your friendship but as long as you make clear lines in the sand in a respectful manner, in a respectful way. Um, and like I said, you're, you're producing a document, an SOP, that says, hey, this is how we handle our meetings. This is how we bring up new ideas. This is the process in which we will go through if we do not agree. And this is the space that you will allow me to have if I do have a disagreeing argument or I want to do something new but you don't want to do and you'll allow me and give me the space to actually voice why I want to do these new things. Um, that's something that I see um, in my experience that sometimes doesn't happen or if you don't know how to argue your position like you want to do something new but you haven't yet have the tools the, the verbal tools um, to argue right in a respective or debate that's a better word debate your side of the argument so um, i would definitely start to practice there and that's all it is is practice is being able to be comfortable with voicing your opinion um if you want to try something new or if you want to speak up and say something that that's those are just interpersonal skills that sometimes just come with experience but i think if we're more aware of that in the beginning we can hurt less feelings. <laughs> and it doesn't matter too. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or you're a man or if you're sensitive or you're not. Um, everybody's sensitive. 
You know, everybody cares. Everybody has an ego about their own idea and their vision, um, however big or small it is. And so the, the more that you can address that, um, you know, makes you more of a visionary, more of a leader. Um, and it's just something to, to think about. So that was kind of played off of what I first talked about in the first video, but I think that I didn't make that really quite clear and I wanted to just round it up again and put a knot on it, put a bow on it. Lastly, what I'll talk about in this video and then continue on the discussion in the next part of this series is that you said that you've only really done projects for friends, but it's like now you need to start doing things for people who don't know you, um, strangers who don't have any connection to you or any obligation to you to say yes, an obligation to say, yeah, that's a good job. And there's a couple of ways to do that. The easiest one is to do it for free for people. Now, there's pros and cons to that, and I'm gonna let you kind of decide whether or not you wanna do that. A lot of times when people are doing things for free, they don't believe in their ability and their uh, quality of work, and that's fine. Like, as a, as a starting point, if that's what you wanna do to offer things for free, there's, there's a great benefit to that. You can just right away, learn experience right away. Otherwise, you can research, okay? You can research who charges what in your field, um, and look at what a normal designer would do, a normal photographer would charge, and, and critically um, compare it to the work that you provide. You know, really try to break down other businesses and how they do things, and hopefully they've been in business more than, I'd say, three to five years. They've probably figured some, something out. You know, they have a continuing client base. And so I would take a look at businesses who do that, break down their process, break down their prices if you can get a hand, um, get a hold of it. And what's the service like? Because what we deal with, you know, you're a designer, I'm a photographer, we're in the service business, which is different than, than selling physical products. Because you can be like, here's my product, there you go. But we deal with the service business side of things. And um, it's very much you, you know, it's, it's very much the experience that a client or customer has with you. Um, and it starts from like the moment that they find you incidentally and, and how they found you, that's also part of the equation. Was it Instagram? Was it Facebook? Was it Google searching? Was it a uh, keyword searching? Was it a referral? All these things. So from the moment that first touch point to you know the last one with you, which can be many parts in this chain. Again, there's a chain there. So from the moment that they discover you to the moment that you maybe make a sale um, there's that chain and then there's that after that chain after you make a sale um, what is the taste in their mouth when you're done with them is it really nice is it really good is there a um, how do you say like a like a lifetime value like my mentor says is there a lifetime value to this customer that you can continue to you know excuse my word but milk can you milk it how long can you milk it for? How long is the chain, the, the, the sales process? And it begins at a very early stage. Um, and you can argue so, you can argue so many ways that with this chain begins. It, you could be like, oh, it begins in the mine. <laughs> um, but that's something to think about too. So at this point, you've done stuff for friends and I've seen the website and it looks all great. Okay, but I don't see any, I don't see you anywhere. So I don't know if it's you or who else, like who's taking these pictures, who's designing. There's no transparency. Um, at this point, it's very generic. Um, the body of work is good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, how are you going to stand out from the rest of the people who take photos of things, you know? Um, what's the experience like? What's the service like? So that's something that you could definitely start on and you can start to figure out what are the things that your market is um, unconsciously asking for when you do work for strangers, okay? So um, still do stuff for friends, that's cool. It's all good practice, it's all part of it. Start surveying them, start asking them questions if they don't mind, like, you know, how was it, Were you, did you feel that I answered all of your questions, that I feel that I, I captured um, exactly what you were feeling with this design. Um, there's so many ways that you can get to know about your customer or client. We haven't done them all. It's hard, 
it's hard to cover all the things. It's like I have millions of ideas. It's, it's just a matter of executing them. Um, and when you're dealing with partners, it's harder to make moves because say they're not comfortable with it or they're not doing it in such a way that is the right tone. Um, for example, when Kevin and I make video, like obviously I'm more attuned to video. I'm more natural on video, but he isn't. So it takes, there's a disconnect there, right? And so that's something we're working on, but it's, it's an idea that's being executed and getting better and better as we go. And the same thing will be with you. You know, the, the first time that you start marketing yourself or start putting your foot down and saying, this is who we are, that's gonna change, it's gonna evolve. Um, don't get too attached to things that are like your identity and stuff like that. That will all evolve. I think if you have a nice clear vision of who you are um, at first, it's not like we do everything. Um, you have a, a much focused vision about who you are, about what makes you guys unique. Um, you're gonna have a much easier time evolving and the evolving process will be quicker. Okay, because we really, we really do not have a lot of time to figure stuff out. We think we do. Um, and we end up, we do end up wasting a lot of time and at the same time, it's like, it takes, it's gonna take the time it's gonna take, <laughs> you know? Like, um, I'm always trying to move very quickly with ideas so I can test it very quickly and be like, okay, cool, that works, that doesn't work, let's go. There's pros and cons to that approach as well, but uh, I think the, the faster that you can move, the, the faster you can get to your goal. Okay, so I think I'm rambling a little bit too much, but that's where I would start. That was stipulation number two. We've got like four more videos to make, and I have a lot of things to say because um, this is my life. This is all we do. I don't have any children, um, so I'm just sitting at the computer making and thinking and executing ideas about marketing and business, and that's really all we do. Um, and sometimes we go on vacation, and then it's not a vacation. <laughs> It's, it's, it's photography. So I hope that helps, I hope it's clear. And maybe you have to listen to it a couple times. Sometimes I hear things that are very powerful to me and I only take from it maybe <clears throat> two things. And I'm like, cool, that was life changing. And that's fine, you know, that, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Like if it, um, if it helps you, it helps. If it doesn't, cool. Maybe in a couple of months it will click or it will make sense because now you've had that experience um, and place of like, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about, I can relate. And I'm sure, I'm sure you can relate on a much of these things. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. And uh, I'll make the next video next time. <laughs> See ya.